and welcome to today's pick a, oh my gosh, what are we going to call this? A beach thing? I'm just going to call it a pick a crystal because there's kind of one crystal here. Um, today's video is aimed to sort of raise your vibration a little bit. I did do a full moon predictions reading and then I turned the news on the next day and I was thinking, oh my lord, I can understand why some of those predictions came in. So I, my heart goes out to everyone who's going through hard times right now, whether that's due to COVID or just generally due to limitations set by your government or, you know, we can't choose where we're born. So my heart goes out to you. You are loved, you are worthy, and you deserve happiness, um, as well as all this natural disaster business and the failure of um, the people who are supposed to protect us, failing to protect us. So I'm, that's, I'm not going to dwell on that because I'm guessing you came here to avoid all of that. So that's all I'm going to say, but I'm thinking of everyone and I'm sending love your way. Um, so today's video, we're asking Spirit, what is next in love for you? Now, there is going to be an extended to this video. If you aren't a patron yet, I do want to warn you, this happens every month. The billing cycle for Patreon is the first of the month. If you sign up today, you will be charged twice. There is a message that warns you when you sign up, but I still receive messages from people saying that they weren't expecting it. So just be careful. If you sign up today or before the 1st of March, you're going to be charged again on the 1st of March. So you may want to just wait until then if you want to watch the extended. All the content is available there too. Whenever you join up, I've been doing Patreon for I think four months now. This is coming into our fifth month, so there is five months worth of extended reading, extra fortnightly guidance readings, zodiac readings, um, exploring spirituality series. I also teach tarot, how to read tarot like me on Patreon for Labradorite members. So all of five months worth of content is going to be up there come the 1st of March. If you're not a patron yet, I recommend you wait until March to sign up. So what is next in love for you? We have three beach items today. All of these were collected about two weeks ago. I was drying them out and then I rinsed them and then dried them out again. So <laughs> here they are. Group one, what is next in love for you? If you choose this old dried out piece of coral, then this is going to be your reading. It's actually, I love going to the beach. It's my happy place. Group two, if you chose the quartz rock crystal, um, I'm just calling it quartz. We just, that's what we call it here. But it's very beautiful to find these littered across like a, a brownie or like gray beach. They just stand out so much. Group two, that's your rock. And group three, you have the shell. I think it's a trochus shell, but I could be wrong. Um, this shell, again, all these items just stood out to me, even though they're weathered and battered. I just love collecting things from the beach. So if you choose this shell, then you are in group three. So three groups, timestamps are linked down below. When you're ready, click on your timestamps and join me in your reading. Hi, group one, and welcome. If you chose the coral, then this is going to be your reading. So group one, we're asking spirit today, what is next in love for you? I actually want to start with some oracle cards. We're going to see what is next in love for you, group one. What is next in love for group one, please, spirit? What does group one need to know? What is next in love for group one? Wow. I heard that song, Share the Love. <laughs> my, my younger siblings are obsessed with those that group of people who made that song, Share the Love, on YouTube. What is next in love? Goodness me, bottom deck energy is the four of wands in this deck. Let's get one more oracle deck to clarify our energies, please, spirit, very clearly. What is next in love for my group ones? <clears throat> what is next in love for group one? What is next in love for group one, please, spirit? What is next in love for group one? Thank you. Bottom deck energy is the fossilized wood. So unconventional like this selection of crystals we have today. Fossilized wood with your heart chakra, Taurus, and the number 14. So this is interesting, you guys. The first card that came out for you was the two of cups coming together. We also have share the love, which is reverse, but I don't know if I want to take it as that. I think I'm going to leave it like this. Um, we also had the five of swords. We've got the Three of Swords, 
These cards say win or lose, sadness and isolation, and we also have the High Priestess. Um, listen. So honestly, you guys, I wouldn't be surprised if you're in a period of stillness, if for whatever reason, not a heck of a lot is happening in your love life. You seem to be in a transitionary period where the aim of your situation is for spirit to bring you out of this period of, I want to say, not a heck of a lot has been happening. Um, like you seem stable, but the focus when it comes to your love life and what may be next is to challenge boundaries and to attempt to elevate your circumstances. But it's really about what you want and what you're willing to listen to when it comes to the advice on how to get more than what you have currently. I really feel with the two of cups that you, you do have someone potentially that you're coming together with. But if this is a new relationship or if this relationship has been on the rocks, there is this energy of patience and taking your time, feeling your way through this. There's a lot of like discussions and, and sort of slowly coming into comfortability with one another because it feels like this is a, a relationship that had some some stuff happened to it. Either you separated from this person recently, broke up, or you've both been going through your own different sort of situations, or this is someone who felt like unrequited love and you're having to be re-triggered by those feelings because they've popped back up in your life. I feel like there's someone coming in and there's going to be lighthearted opportunities to spend time getting to know each other with the Three of Cups. This is like a reunion energy, celebratory energy. But with the win or lose here, it's really about taking it slow and sort of feeling your way through it. I kind of feel like this is a change, absolutely. And I feel like someone needs to take a risk here. Um, that risk might be as simple as, oh, I'm going to risk rejection and tell this person how I feel. Um, it could be as severe as my culture or my circumstances forbade me from seeing this kind of person, but I'm going to take the risk anyway. Like it could be minor or it could be major, but I do feel like there is a risk associated with this person or you expressing your feelings. Now, for most part, I feel like a lot of the challenges when it comes to this risk are mental. Like I don't think the perception is that bad, but it does have a win or lose situation here. It does have this win or lose energy. Like, you risk it and you win, you don't risk it and you lose kind of energy. Like, And then you have to live with the fact that you may never know as well. So it's very interesting. And I almost feel that for some of you, um, this could be the second time that you're in a situation like this where you're either crushing on like a friend or a friend's friend or someone in, in your social circle and it triggers old feelings of sadness and isolation, of rejection and perhaps unrequited love or just generally just feeling like um, you may not, like you have some sort of challenge to overcome. The other message that I'm getting is that you're coming together with somebody after a period of sadness, isolation, and healing. So even if, you know, there's no massive challenges, maybe the challenge is as simple as you got to tell this person how you feel, um, which in, in itself isn't a simple challenge, is it, for those of us who know. But I do feel like um, there's this period here of almost heartbreak, and then all of a sudden you're, you're given your two of cups. Like you're going through something, and then this unlikely yet compatible companion comes your way. And the two of cups is really the reason why these cards we've got coming together and share the love, because you kind of start this with a friendship energy, it starts with someone who you think you can form some sort of emotional bond with. It may be somewhat compromised. It may need um, a little bit of work, but there's this feeling of, I trust you in both of you, and I want to get to know you more in both of you. Um, and I really feel like that's why spirit is kind of asking you to feel your way through this slowly, especially with the high priestess here. It's this real emphasis energy on feel your way through this, whether you call your intuition, your gut instinct or your heart, I'm just following my heart. I'm just following my gut. Um, it's really about, or I'm following my third eye for those of, you, those of you who are clear cognizant. It's really about feeling your way through this with your intuition, um, not feeling too rushed and really feeling for that opportune moment. Because for some of you, it's about choosing that moment to share your feelings in order to have the joy and stability you deserve. Now, the fossilized wood over here is telling me you will have love. And I feel like it's quite sturdy coming your way. That is what's next. With the Taurus here, it could be an earth sign coming through. 
but I feel more the Venus attributes of Taurus. Um, this is someone who, like, it's going to give you an opportunity to focus more on, um, I feel like the face value attraction, like a little bit of fun, a little bit of admiration, feeling that uh, excitement of somebody sort of paying you extra attention, you know, <laughs> that sort of energy. And it feels like with time it becomes something more stable, but it's a little bit just exciting and um, new for now, and that's all we need. Now, for some of you, I'm going to be honest with you, we do have the angel out here, and I'm going to get tarot, but we don't have any aces. So you may already know this person, or they may already be a part of your friend group somehow. You may be aware of each other somehow. This doesn't feel like a necessarily brand new connection. Um, it could just be a case with the two of cups that you recognize each other's kindred energy and it's you just feel like you've known each other before. But i got to give you that heads up. There's no aces here, so this could be someone you already know. Now with the jade coming out, number 24, we have Venus and heart chakra. That's that Venus energy I was picking up on. So there is a lot of love coming your way, but it starts with that sort of surface level fun moments of sort of coming together, potential reunion um, that leads to you meeting this kindred soul again for some of you and reconnecting um and then it just kind of feels like this moment where you have to decide well what do i do with these feelings um and this could all happen in one night if i'm honest like you might be going through something you go to some sort of social gathering or you go down to the grocery store you see a friend and they've got someone with them and you guys end up having lunch together and then your friend goes to the bathroom and you end up realizing that, wow, I really like this person and they seem to be into me. And you know your friend's going to come back soon, so you decide, well, should I win, win or lose situation? Do I share my feelings with them? Should I ask them out? What's going on? Like it could be that kind of situation, but it seems like it starts off as something somewhat solid, like an invitation that you're not expecting it will lead to this and then all of a sudden – there's the opportunity there of, well, do I express my feelings? And I see that expression leads to joy and stability, just saying, but you'll know within yourself whether to do it on the night of meeting this person or whether to wait and, and just see if they pop up in your life again. Um, we have Angelite coming out as well. So Angelite, the number 11, um, Aquarius, and third eye chakra. So this person, in terms of dates, I'm seeing twos and threes a hell of a lot. The 23rd, the 24th, um, the 4, 5, 11, and 14. So the Angelite for me with Aquarius here and the third eye, it's more of that intuitive feeling. This could be somewhat of a surprise for you, something that you weren't expecting. It could be a surprise invitation that leads to this. But I feel like you guys are in a period where um, it's really about honing into that level of trust you have for yourself and letting it guide you down a potentially new path because I feel like even if you know this person with Aquarius coming out now, there is something unique and reinventive about this situation. Like it feels like that's why we have to trust ourselves because maybe the circumstances are unconventional or maybe the person is unconventional. Like it's not someone we were expecting to see or, or come together with at these times. Maybe the circumstances are like you're, you're going through something else with this three of swords and you're thinking, goodness, I really like this person, but am I ready? Um, there's something about this that requires a level of reinventive thinking. Um, not really pigeonholing yourself when it comes to your thought process here and really trusting your third eye in this process, trusting your intuition, trusting that gut feeling, trusting your heart, um, whatever that, wherever you choose to call it. Um, what is next in love for group one, please, Spirit? What is next in love for group one? All my days. You know how I was saying there's no aces here, so I don't know. We just got two aces. Um, we have the star card coming out, so more of that Aquarius energy. Very reinventive. I feel like whatever you've been going through, we have the opportunity now to change up your energy with this with this coming together business. Now, the star card is making me think that you're healing something from your past and you're in this position of because you've kind of left yourself open to wherever the, whatever the universe provides to you in terms of your healing energy or healing journey, it feels like you're drawing in something from your past as well in a renewed, reinventive way, whether it's a person or a circumstance. Like it, there could be something about this that feels uncannily familiar, if I'm honest. Like it kind of feels like that serendipitous moment where you're like, oh my goodness, 
three weeks ago, did you go to the grocery store and spill all your milk in aisle three? Because I was there buying chips and when they announced it over the PA system, I couldn't stop laughing. And it's like that kind of moment where you realize you've actually met this person before somehow or you, your stories somehow align. Um, there's something about your past that uncannily ties you to your future. Now, we did have the Ace of Wands, which was reversed, but now it's upright. So there is a rebirth opportunity here for you to come out of a period of sadness and isolation. This could be pertaining to a rebirth of somebody you already know, but regardless, you're coming together with someone who your feelings are growing for very quickly. And it's really about trusting yourself, taking a risk and expressing your feelings, and then just slowly building the joy and stability. We also have the eight of wands here. So I do feel like there, this is going to come fairly quickly in terms of a time frame. Um, for some of you, the Taurus season could be very, very significant. We're just coming out of Aquarius now and we're coming into, um, we're in Pisces. So Pisces, then Taurus. I feel like, excuse me, is it Taurus next? Yes, it is. Is it? I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? I, I just skipped Aries and um, yeah, <laughs> I just skipped Aries. Oh, well, anyway, Taurus, for whatever reason, Taurus season could be very significant for you because of all this Taurian energy that you got in your Oracle cards. Um, we also have the Ace of Cups here, which is reverse. So that's interesting. And I feel like that is that warning of suppressing your feelings, that win or lose situation we were talking about earlier. I do think that what is next in love has some sort of surprise for you. Um, it requires your quick response, but then slow progress, if that makes sense. Quick response because it's a win or lose situation, but then slow progress. And I think with the Ace of Cups reverse, this may trigger feelings of previously being unrequited, that sort of energy. And we also have the King of Cups coming out for you. So I do feel like what is next in love is you are going to encounter someone who you develop feelings for very quickly. Um, they're interested in you. you. You can pick up on the fact that this person is wanting more of your time and they're, they're very inquisitive and they seem to be very um, engaged when you talk and there's an energy that the two of you share. Um, but then when it comes to expressing your feelings, I see there's hesitation because you are going through something separately. Maybe you feel that, you know, your headspace isn't a hundred percent. There's concerns over, um, something that happened to you in the past repeating and under these circumstances. But I see with the King of Cups here that this person's feelings for you are fairly strong as well, you guys. And with the star and the two aces, like honestly, and you've got the four of wands, I see that this is just those case of nerves when you meet someone that you're into and you're just kind of like, well, do I tell them how I feel? Honestly, telling them how you feel could just lead to a lot more early success than waiting. It's not to say, you know, what is meant for you will not miss you. So it's not to say that um, not expressing yourself early leads to failure, but I'm just seeing that choosing that opportune moment for you to share your love leads to early success, early joy, early stability. Um, trusting yourself from the beginning will lead to a lot of success, group one. I don't know how better I can word that, so let's see what the tissue box has to say for you. Group one, what is next in love for them, please? Okay. What is next in love for group one? I can't believe I completely skipped Aries and was like, Taurus is next. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am always, and listen, I'm not an angry person, so I don't have feuds, but I'm always feuding with Taurus people. Like, I don't know, maybe it's the cardinal in me. I'm just out here like offending Tauruses every day. I'm Aries people every day. Now, when it comes to initials, these could be yours or the, <laughs> the initials of the person you're dealing with. Excuse me. Um, we have the letter I coming out. Honestly, I'm feeling intuitive here. Okay, group one, intuitive. Trust your intuitive mind. We also have the letter E. And I heard that Fleetwood Mac song everywhere. That's really cute. We have the letter A. We've got like, all these vowels coming out. I, E, A. We also have the letter X for excellency. I honestly think this person will make you feel appreciated as soon as they meet you. Like they're going to want to know more about you. Maybe a little bit like shy, but I feel like you both are a little bit awkward initially. But I kind of get this energy of like you feel it when you know you know. Group two, group one, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. 
We have the letter F here as well. We have the letter M. We have the letter J. And we also had, interestingly enough, this is so bizarre, this never happens. We have yes and no coming out. So I feel that win or lose energy here. Yes and no, win or lose, yes and no, you have this mental conflict going on with you, and maybe it's because of the setting, because Five of Swords can in instigate um, like a social, or it can insinuate at least, a social mis misfortune, um, so maybe you're feeling like, oh, this would be horrible if this person rejected me in front of our friends, but like that's just a fleeting moment, I honestly see like a lot of quick action leads to stable progress, I'm seeing headache here, so that kind of amplifies that energy of like being in your head a little bit and confused and that little moment of like, do I do it now? Do I do it now? We also have gratitude here. So being very grateful for the opportunities you are provided. I feel like when it comes to this situation, there's going to be a level of gratitude in the moment because of what you're healing and the fact that this kindred soul has come back into your life either in this lifetime or from the previous lifetime, you're going to feel like a healing energy there. The Two of Cups is a beautiful, supportive, nurturing energy of um, physical souls getting to know each other, but the your energy is already familiar. Like there's a level of you that trusts this person already. There's a level of you that feels like you're going to be safe with them and that you can trust them with your feelings, which is what prompts you to want to share your feelings with them because you kind of know... Um, They've, they're going to be reci like receptive in the very least, let alone reciprocated. Um, I also feel with that gratitude that you're going to look back on that moment that you chose to share your feelings and you're going to be so grateful that you took advantage of that opportunity. You're going to be so grateful that you didn't wait because hindsight is a beautiful thing. Something could be happening in the future, you know, that, that really just makes this process a lot easier. Spirit is really amplifying that what is meant for you won't miss you, but choosing to seize this early opportunity leads to a lot, um, stability and joy coming a lot sooner than, than, than you would have to wait for, if that makes sense. Like it just comes a lot sooner. We also have inspired here. So I feel like with the two of cups coming out, the two of you are going to be very supportive, very individual still. Like there's this need to embrace each other's almost differences in a way, but like individual needs. Um, and you kind of seem to inspire each other as well. Like there's this level of, um, I don't know if this relationship leads to you wanting to expand or wanting to move into like a new area of your life, a new phase of your life, or to consider new er new milestones in your life. Like maybe this person makes you want to have children and you never thought you were going to have children, or this person makes you want to leave your hometown and you never thought you would move out. Or this person may want you to go, may inspire you to go back to your hometown and you never thought you were going to go back, like those sorts of things. Um, inspiring you to step outside of some sort of box. We have love here. So I do feel like feelings come on very strongly and very quickly with this person. You're going to very quickly realize, oh my gosh, this could be a soulmate. We have fire. So there is a lot of passion here with the eight of wands and the joy and stability. I wouldn't be surprised if the two of you like share a kiss or something like that with all this heated energy. I'm actually sweating, which is bizarre because I have the aircon on and the fan on in the background. But um, yeah, it could be like a heat of the moment energy here surrounding this opportunity. Now in terms of houses, we have the seventh house, partnerships, contracts, relationships. So again, I see like quick action leads to long-term success. That's what it's telling us. I'm going to skip those. We'll go back to the houses. We have sixth house. So this is like Virgo. That was Libra. We have routines, health, service to others. So I do feel like I don't know how to describe it. It's like you either aren't expecting this person or um, this action very quickly leads to the two of you being a part of each other's lives. Like there's that kind of energy here of like, especially with the four of wands, like maybe this leads to the two of you spending a lot of time in quarantine together or like visiting each other's home. Like there's this energy of this person being a part of your routine for whatever reason, like especially because they start with the two of cups. You already feel like you know them. You already feel like you can trust them. You already feel like um, 
they're a me meant to be a part of your life in one way or another. So there could be an opportunity to incorporate each other and forge a new routine together, if that makes sense. This person may be focusing on their health right now and you could both be very health conscious and you may choose to like do some sort of health routine together, like let's go to the gym together or let's go for our walks together and that can be our way of like getting to know each other, that sort of energy. Like I'm not too sure, but I think that this is a very kind person in general um, with the service to others and they, they may be very analytical as well. So you feel like you're in your head, they probably are as well. We have the three of <laughs> the three of houses. <laughs> oh my Lord. Um, we have the third house coming out as well to confirm that sort of analytical nature, my group ones. So this is like communication, community and siblings. That's that feeling of like friends. Maybe you fall into someone in your friend group type of energy. Um, where do I want to go to next? Let's do the signs. Let's just get them over with. So we had Virgo, we had Gemini, we had Libra. We've got Leo coming out as well. We have Cancer coming out, some cardinal energy. And we have Libra, so more cardinal energy. This person could have Libra in their chart, Sun, Moon, Rising, or something like that, Venus potentially. Or you could. We have the third eye chakra as well. So that spirit really asking you to trust what you are feeling, to trust where your information is coming from, whether that's your gut or um, your heart or, you know, that, that inner knowing, your clear cognizance, whatever your, whatever your third eye is trying to tell you and however you choose to trust your instincts, spirit is saying really trust yourself. Don't forget everything you've learned about yourself up until now. You know, you can trust yourself. Um, you can trust what you are feeling in this situation as well. Group one, I think that's all I have for you. I'm going to have to cut it there. I thought we were going to get up to 30 minutes, but I don't want to just ramble. So I'm going to take this into the extended. Um, just that warning again, if you are new to Patreon, I do recommend that you wait until the 1st of March to join. Otherwise, you will be billed twice. It's up to you if you want to be billed twice. Um, but I do want to make it obvious. There is a message that shows up, a little warning sign, but people still miss it. So just in case, um, if you're new, maybe wait till the 1st of March. But in the extended, what I'm going to be doing is getting more time frames. I'm going to be getting more, um, well, full stop, I'm going to be getting channeled messages. I didn't get any channeled messages here. And we're just going to see if we can get personality traits around this person as well. So it's just going to be a little bit um, getting more information about your person, channel messages, and then time frames as well as to when this person may be coming in again for some of you. Group one, if this is where you choose to leave us, look after your wonderful self. Thank you so much for all of your support, sending you my love, my light, wherever you are in this world. And I shall see you in another video. Bye. Hi, group two, and welcome. If you chose the quartz, from the beach, then this is going to be your reading. So group two, we're asking spirit, what is next in love for you? I must have moved, I want them in frame, my beautiful crystals. We can kind of move the smoking over there. <laughs> there we go. What is next in love for you, group two? We're going to be starting with oracle cards. There will be an extended as well on Patreon. I'll get into that at the end of your reading. Well, let's see what is next in love for you. We're starting with some oracle cards, please, spirit. What is next in love for group two? What is next in love for group two? It's interesting. What is next in love? No, watch. This came out for the last group. I'm going to have to call it there. Bottom deck energy is the ace of swords. Clarity or belief. I feel like you're going to have a new... Something new is coming into your thoughts. Um or a new communication that offers you clarity. But if it's a thought, it, it helps you believe in something. It, it gives you a new belief. Um, and listen, the first card that came out for you was the throat chakra, blocked. Now, I'm not taking reversals in this deck, but I do feel like it's about opening up and expressing something in order to get the information you need to move forward. Um, next, we also had the four of wands. So I'm kind of getting this energy of like, balancing things out, offering stability, and potentially just experiencing a lot of happiness because of open communication, because you spoke when you felt you should have, because you were offered the information you felt you needed. Like there's some sort of new communication here that offers stability and kind of balancing your energy. And that makes sense because we have share the love coming out for you. So I do feel like potentially 
what is next in love is communication leads to balanced energy and reciprocated energy as well. With the Seven of Cups coming out, it was shown to me reverse, but like I said, I'm not taking reversals. I do feel like this daydreams and decisions is what caused the confusion and the blockages when it comes to your communication. But with joint stability being um, above the Embrace card, this is the World card, there's an energy of things balancing out and potentially coming full circle. Like to the point where we're, we're allowing ourselves to look at things differently. We're allowing ourselves a new way of thinking or a new piece of information for once. I feel like you guys are potentially breaking out of a confusing cycle that has left you feeling like, well, what is my next step? Where to from here? What am I going to do next? Um, Spirit is really wanting us to share our love. <laughs> Excuse me, hiccups, holy heck. You're the second group that got the Share the Love card, so... Interesting. Let's get some more oracle cards. Group two, please, spirit. What is next in love for group two? Oh, I'm sorry, but no. What is next in love for group two, please? What is next in love for group two? What is next in love? We have two watery energies. We have the chrysopraise, sorry, chrysopraise, number 20, Pisces and crown chakra, as well as that interesting yoga pose. Honestly, that's how I wake up in the morning. <laughs> Look at that. That's how I wake up. <laughs> um, turquoise, the number 32. We have the moon and we also have the throat chakra. So it's interesting. Talk about your feelings. Spirit is saying share the love. Talk about your feelings. I also kind of feel, if I can say so, we're talking about feelings, um, there's some sort of guidance to do so with the crown chakra here. Like you guys know that if you do the same thing, if you continue to close off your throat chakra and live in this daydream without making decisions, without expression, then how the hell are you meant to break out? Like some of you guys know that this needs to happen. With Pisces coming out, you know that this has to end. Pisces is the last sign in the zodiac, and I'm really seeing endings, endings. Like, this cycle has to end. You know this with your crown chakra. We have to be very clear with the number 20. We have to be very clear. We have to make a decision in order to get a new beginning. And I really feel that for you guys, it is clear. Clearing out your mind, being very clear about what you want, clear about your choice, whatever that is, in order to have this joy and stability. It's really interesting. Either you already have a person or you haven't had a person in a long time and you've been in love with a fantasy or you've been chasing a fantasy. Um, and Spirit's saying you have to really be very clear here, communicate in order for your joy and stability. You have to think clearly. You have to talk clearly. Um, like I'm really getting like expression, please express yourself, please share yourself. <laughs> Why yourself? Share your feelings is what I wanted to say or share your thoughts, but apparently spirit is saying, please share yourself. So some of you may be isolating yourselves unhealthily. Um, obviously most of us are doing it healthily at the moment because of what's going on in the world. But I do feel like with the throat chakra here and this endings business, like communicate your feelings, communicate your feelings with the moon, communicate your feelings, feel your feelings, understand your feelings first. Like this pose isn't someone who's out here talking. It's someone who's lying on their back thinking and feeling. So really understand your feelings first, understand what you want, understand what your feelings are trying to tell you. If you feel like you're attached to a fantasy, there's got to be a reason why you can't get this out of your head, but be very clear about what you want because it's going to help you have the balance, the endings, so that you can move into this new opportunity. Now, in my hands, I have Amazonite, which is the number three, Mercury in your throat chakra. I'm really hearing share the love, three, share the love with your throat chakra here. It will lead to some sort of new beginning for you guys. Let's see what the tarot has to say for you. Oops. This is so interesting. Why is that coming out for all of us? And it's interesting because I don't know how you're meant to communicate. We'll see what Tarot says. Um, what is next in love for group two, please, Spirit? What is next in love for group two? 
What is next in love for group two? What is next in love for group two, please? What is next in love for group two? One more or no? No. Yeah, you've got to be very clear, you guys. With the two of pentacles at the bottom, this isn't supposed to be as difficult of a, of a decision as it is. Spirit's saying it's, this is only a dis difficult decision. I can't even say that word. This is only a difficult decision because you're trying to think of the logistics. You're thinking of this practically, like this isn't going to work because of the distance or it's not going to work because this person works at night and I work during the day and when are we going to see each other? There's this feeling of you're way too practical about a situation that is supposed to be about your heart. You're supposed to do what is going to make you happy and it's only getting confusing because there's little practical logistical things that you're trying to add up and weigh together and it's like it's getting to the point where you've created all this confusion. Some of the obstacles in front of you aren't even real. And now you don't know what's left, what's right, what's up, what's down, what, where, where do I go? So Spirit is really asking you, Group 2, to declutter your mind, to be very clear about what you actually want, what you actually need, and to potentially make room for this to come in because you've kind of cluttered your energy. You're so worried about how this is going to work from Step 1 to Step 25 that there's so much in front of you, nobody would even be able to come near you. Like if we look at ourselves as energy, you are so blocked by your thoughts and your confusion and your daydreams. Nothing can come to you in this state. It really feels like you need to start inwards and really think clearly about what is going to make you happy, what you look for in a relationship so that spirit can start to bring these things to you especially if you're single or if you have someone in mind. This is even worse. If you're single, I feel like it's, it's going to be easier because if you don't have anybody in mind, then you're a completely blank slate and you just have to focus on yourself and, and generally thinking of who you want in your life, what kind of personality they might have, how they will treat you, what values you would like them to have, etc. Um, if you have someone in mind, it's going to be a bit difficult, group two, because you've almost blown them out of proportion. You're obsessing with a fantasy in the good and bad. This person is a real person. And I feel like some of you have either labeled some of their, the, some of the challenges in this relationship prematurely. They're not either real challenges or some of you are putting them on too high of a pedestal before you've actually gotten to know them intimately. Um, there is a feeling here of, like, if you have someone in mind specifically, really think clearly, focus on what you know, and go back to basics when it comes to, well, what is going to make you happy? Don't go, well, this person told me briefly in the 30 seconds that I saw them that they could never, ever leave this place and and I, I'm not that kind of person. Like, that's spirit saying you seem to have made, you seem to have drawn unfair conclusions over the situation based on logistical or practical things that aren't even obstacles. So it's really about dialing it back, declutter your energy and, and really think clearly about, well, what is going to make you happy? Because the universe wants to give this to you. All your cards down here are just like, they want to give it to you, but your energy is blocking you right now. You're really making this a lot more complicated than it needs to be. And that's where this has to end because you're kind of standing in the way for a lot of happiness. Let's let's keep going though. I don't mean to like, oof, I don't mean to cut you down a peg, but I really need to let you know, like some of these things aren't real. Some of these challenges aren't real. This is a real person who apparently you could be very successful with. Um, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, a lot of this has existed in your minds and in, in daydreams and in a fantasy. And that's where a lot of fears and concerns and confusion has arisen as well. And it's like that's a part of this other world that may exist in a different reality. But in this reality, there's just a lot of confusion and energetic blocks. So in terms of your tarot, we have the six of wands coming out, indicating success and victory, recognition. I also get this energy of give and take. It's balanced. 
the feelings, the energy here is balanced in the sense of what you feel this person potentially feels as well. This could indicate that you are someone who likes to know you're going to be successful before you act. You're someone who needs a level of um, recognition or praise or you, you're someone who wants to feel like they're going to be successful before you've even attempted to go into battle. Like this is what it's giving me. You're someone whose ego needs a little bit of like a scrub up and like you're going to you're going to be fine. You're going to be OK. You're going to come out successful. It's going to be fine. Like you kind of need that. Um, but overall, that card is really positive. OK, that's telling me that you are going to be successful in this situation. Group two, it's telling me that this situation is leading to victory, but the energy needs to be balanced first. The energy needs to be a little bit more stable and and balanced in the sense of this confusion we have to really cut through what is a fantasy what our mind has conjured up we have to take this person off their pedestal of of godliness and put them down onto earth again because this is a real person <laughs> i feel like yes you probably romanticize them and they are probably very incredible i'm not down i'm not downgrading their amazingness but they are just a person and with the Page of Swords here, I feel like we do have the opportunity to communicate. There is an energy of like investigating with that card. I want to say there's a level of investigating. Someone here is like doing a bit of a scrolling through social media and Googling and looking at someone and potentially uh, this is leading to the confusion. This is leading to the frustration and you needing to, if this is you, group two, I feel like you see a picture of this person somewhere and you, you draw immediate conclusions over like who they could have been with, what they could have done, what they're up to now. And that picture could have been taken two months ago. Like this person apparently is not up to a hell of a lot. Like this person, they give me a very, I do think this person thinks a lot too, but they give me a very chill energy. So I'm getting a hyperactive mind and a very reserved energy. So I don't know. I feel like unfortunately there's a lot of miscommunication in a situation that some of you are, are in because a lot of it is a fantasy that's been blown out of proportion internally. Um, with the three of wands coming out here, I do feel an element of waiting and I do feel the universe desiring expansion for you, group two. You weren't supposed to be stuck. You weren't supposed to feel like a slave to your daydreams. You weren't supposed to exist in just your fantasy. You were supposed to be moving forward. But I see that unless the energy is balanced, unless success is guaranteed, you're not going to be out here doing spontaneous things with the eight of wands reversed. You're someone who needs to have their feet firmly planted um, in the outcome before you've even attempted to move towards it. Like you need to, that's what it kind of feels like. And I want to get more information about your person, if that will help you. If you have someone in mind, if you are single, then please know that the only thing standing in your way is your self group too. If you feel you're ready to date, if you feel you're ready to meet someone, the world is literally your oyster. And when it comes to ways that you could meet someone, start with yourself, start with your thoughts, start with decluttering, decompressing as well, um, kind of working through the confusion, finding what you truly want, setting your intentions clearly. And then spirit is encouraging you to actually like put yourself out there somehow if you are single. With the world here, it kind of feels like it would be through dating apps. That's probably the safest way. But you don't need to leave your home with the four of wands. So <laughs> there is a way for you to experience the world from your home. And all of us are learning that right now. And with the three of cups here, I am getting like this playful energy around you, group two. The universe wants you to, to get to know someone more intimately. The universe wants you to feel like you can share your love. I get this feeling that you are actually a very precious soul. Like you may present as someone who's tough as nuts, but you have such a precious energy within you. And you were literally someone who is going to raise the vibrations of so many people like when you fall in love it's big it's huge and this next person that you fall in love with could be this person that helps you feel like you're safe enough to share your love you have something very precious within you that the collective energy needs like the universe wants you to fall in love the universe wants you to put yourself out there to go towards the things that you feel are right for you because when you fall in love you raise the collective conscious your energy is so powerful and you are a lover at heart 
Like you may have a really sort of stern and practical side to you, but you have a lover's heart. And that is something that like when you fall in love, you just, the collective conscious just goes, oh, wow, goodness, what happened over there? We all needed that. Like we all need you. <laughs> no pressure group too, but we all need you <laughs> to fall in love. <laughs> We also have the six of pentacles over here. So I do feel like a give and take. Perhaps you're like, you're someone who struggles to get the ball rolling in the beginning. But I see that like what you give will be reciprocated. Okay. Like if that's what you're worried about, what you give will be reciprocated. And with the page of swords here, perhaps you're someone who's a bit more observant. You know, you like to just hang back and do your investigating and let people kind of talk around you and you just information gather like but we do need to uh, do something here otherwise this period of confusion is just going to persist and I do think that you need to know that what you give will be given back to you like the universe is really wanting you to do this the universe really wants you to um fall in love with the person you you are meant to fall in love with in this lifetime so I feel like it is going to be your actions are going to be reciprocated first off but your actions are also going to be supported now with the hermit card here it's this energy of needing or at least trusting your guidance trusting your wisdom um, maybe you're someone who feels like they're not quite ready yet and that's fine but when the time comes, I need you to know you're going to be successful. Can we get some questions about this person, please? If, if you have a person, if you're single as a Pringle, then just do what you need to, to declutter your energy, to simplify the confusion, to ground yourself in reality, and to realize that people are people. They may be the most attractive person on this earth in your eyes, but they're still just a person. They still go to the toilet. They still need to brush their teeth. Otherwise, their breath smells like they're still just a person as fantastical and incredible as they are. They're just a person. All right. So group two, for those of you who have a person in mind, how does this person feel about group two? For those of you who have a person in mind, because I get that some of you are stalking someone online and you just don't know whether you should actually talk to them or communicate with them. How does this person feel? Okay, I'm going to have to call it there because I didn't think I was going to get that many cards. Daughter of Pentacles, this person is curious about you too. This person comes across as a very shy person as well with the Daughter of Pentacles. This could be someone who is like very similar to you in age. Um, I want to say that this person is somewhat inexperienced when it comes to love as well, whether you believe that or not. They are someone who is taking the slower approach, could you believe, even slower than you <laughs> group two not to bag you out but this person is is you two are in the same boat they're staring at you like a deer caught in the headlights and they don't know how to move forward so they're just kind of tentatively grazing the grass in their area waiting for something to happen from you now this person is currently feeling like there's an imbalance in this situation and they don't know how to talk to you about it so they're just hanging back and waiting for something else to happen this person sees you as someone quite impactful with the lovers card here you kind of shook this person's world they still don't know where they stand with you though like you've left them feeling very uncertain about how you perceive them they're kind of like on the edge of they feel an imbalance here they feel like they need to just focus on themselves though because they feel like this is someone who is aware of the fact that they can't control your actions this person feels like you're withholding communication from them on purpose this person also feels like if you wanted to see them you would have reached out by now this person feels like this is a potential relationship, but you're definitely not together. Like this person is definitely like you're not together yet. With justice reverse and the lovers reverse, this has a lot of potential in their eyes, but you're two separate entities right now. The magician also came out. So you have three major arcana that came out one after the other. The magician tells me this person could be manifesting an opportunity to be around you again. This person is very attracted to you. Um, they see a lot of potential in you and in this connection. And I want to say that you inspire this person to kind of be more proactive towards their success. Like this person may be working on goals because something that they saw in you or something that they, when they first met you, triggered them to do this, if that makes sense. We also have the eight of wands. So this person wants to talk to you. They do, but they feel like you kind of just run away. <laughs> like you're a hard person to talk to. 
um, they really think that you're very, very attractive. And I feel like this person does think about you a lot. With the Father of Cups reversed, they don't know how you feel, though. They feel like you either withhold emotions or that you're more wanting something physical. They feel like it's hard to get to your heart, group two. This person wants to talk to you more, but they feel like you just run away. Like you're, you're a hard person to pin down. You're here and then you're gone. Yeah, they don't know what the future holds with you. They feel like your two paths seem to come together and then you just divert into two opposite directions and they can never predict when you're coming back. Like there's something really unexpected about you that they can't rely on. Like you don't tell them anything. You don't, like you might be keeping them on social media every day, but they feel like they haven't seen you in a long time and they feel like they don't know when to expect you back. So I kind of feel this person focusing on themselves and inevitably feeling your paths growing like this. With the nine of swords, they think about you so much. It's actually really annoying. It keeps them up at night. They probably dream about you as well. Um, they can't rec reconcile this within themselves. They kind of know group two, that you were a very significant person in their lives. Um, they're having a really hard time letting you go with the hanged man here. They're always thinking about you, but they are having to plan for something that doesn't include you because you're, you can't, they can't predict what you're going to do next. You seem to just pop up and you go. They can't really, they don't know what you want and you don't seem to be expressing yourself to this person in any way. So they're out here just kind of like, well, that was an interesting inspirational, attractive, magnetic person who potentially could have been my soulmate, but I guess they're not here for me. So <laughs> I might just keep doing what I'm doing and then I'll hope that in future our paths will align again. That's kind of where they're at, okay? I just wanted to be honest because I do feel like it's kind of amplifying this energy of you're your biggest roadblock right now. But let's get more information. What is next in love for group two, please, spirit? So I will see any initials that come out for you will be the initials of yourself or the person that you are dealing with, potentially both. Like some of y'all have been getting both, which is really amazing. Um, we're also going to get additional messages. So let us have a look. The first letter we have is the letter Z. So your initials, their initials of the person you're dealing with. We have the letter L coming out. Cool. We have the letter W. Oh my God, I heard that horrible song by Tana Mojo. I'm at the W. So maybe this person looks like they're traveling a lot or maybe they are traveling. There's an element of travel here and potentially hooking up in hotels. But listen, that's not going to be for everyone. We have the letter I here. We have the letter R. We have the letter O. We have the letter P. We have another O, so this person could have double letters in their first, middle, last name, or you could. We have the letter S. We have the letter E. Easy. Yeah, you know what I just heard? That Bob Marley quote. Ah, damn, I'm going to butcher the hell out of it. What, how does it go again? If it's worth fighting for, it isn't easy. If it's too easy, it isn't worth fighting for, which is bizarre for that to come to mind. But that's what I'm kind of feeling. Like there's a lot of fear here that is not even fear, just confusion, you guys. Like I don't think the, some of these fears, I don't think you're someone who gets scared, but you lose confidence. Unless it's a sure thing, you lose confidence. We have the letter X here. So I do feel like the person you're dealing with doesn't have a hell of a lot of experience when it comes to relationships. So they're just out here kind of grazing on the grass, waiting for something to happen. Like literally like a deer, like they don't know. They're just, they, their instincts are telling them, I think it's time to eat. I think it's time to water myself. Is it spring? Maybe it's time to mate. Like it's just this, they're just feeling themselves through like, well, what feels right? What, what have I physically seen versus like, what, what do I think I need to do to survive? We have the letter D coming out for you as well. We have happiness. So spirit is really encouraging you to follow your happiness. I really feel like you're someone who struggles to trust yourself at times. Like you, you really, you have an incredible mind for a reason. I want to amplify that because I feel like I kind of roasted you based upon your fantasies. 
people who have overactive imaginations, I was literally just having this conversation with my brother, you have this fantastical mind for a reason. You are the source of creation. Like with thoughts, we create this world. So you're supposed to dream big. We're supposed to have dreamers like you in this world who can imagine and exist in completely different realities within your mind. Your, your daydreams are valid. But unfortunately, in this situation, it's just led to a lot of confusion and a stalemate. I do think that you within yourself have a lot of potential you may not have unlocked yet. Um, not to say that this relationship is the precipice of something bigger. It could be. It could be. I just want you to know that there's a beautiful soft side within you that deserves to be heard. It deserves to be expressed. It deserves to be loved. And I do think that the universe right now is really wanting you, <laughs> no pressure, <laughs> to fall in love. Like they really want you to be happy. They really want you to awaken for some of you. This is someone who is potentially going to put you on a new spiritual journey because your energy is not only valid, but entirely important. Like you are a big deal. You are kind of a big deal, group two. You're the dreamer that the whole of humanity needs right now. Like you and your fantastical, wonderful mind have so much um, contributions towards our energy, even if it is something that you never materialize in this reality you have such a joyful spirit that can just be so big-minded and I really do think that there's this whole other side to you that is so deep and full of love that this collective consciousness really needs to raise our vibration so I'm at all for it man just trust yourself and follow what makes you happy we have longing here so I do feel that for some of you you have a very specific person in mind we also have very soon, so the potential to come together could be happening very soon. It all depends on your energy, you know. What do you want very clearly? What are you wanting to bring into your world? You may not even need to leave your home to get the ball rolling, Spirit is saying. Some of you have the potential to get this going from your home. We have inspired, and I do think that you taking actions towards your happiness in one area of your life has a knock-on effect. You're going to be creating happiness in other areas of your life. You're going to be more inspired to take actions towards your happiness in other areas of your life. If you're doing what makes you happy in your love life, you'll very quickly fall into alignment in other areas of your life. It's going to be hard for you to stick to that job that you hate doing because you're following your heart now. You're listening to what makes you happy. In terms of signs, we have Capricorn. We also have Gemini, so only two signs. But we also have the solar plexus chakra. Spirit is really encouraging you guys to move forward, group two. You are destined for so much more than your current situation. Through clear thinking, clear expression, this confusion will disappear instantly. It's really about decluttering your energy, decluttering your thoughts, focusing on what you truly want and how you can truly get there. Um, taking those first steps because the universe will back you. As soon as you start to give more, the universe is going to happily give more to you. It's really about staying open to what is trying to come in because you're so blocked right now that nothing can reach you. Group two, that's what I have for you in terms of what is next in love. You are so precious and I'm sending you so much love. You really deserve all the blessings that are waiting on the other side of this energy <laughs> vortex you have around you. Um, I'm going to take this into the extended now. The extended is on Patreon. I do need to warn you, the billing cycle is on the first of every month. If you skip the intro, I do recommend if you're a new patron that you join on the first of March. Otherwise, you're going to be billed twice. In the extended, we're going to be getting time frames. We're going to be getting channeled messages from this person that you're longing for. And we're also going to be getting um, more like personality traits about them and what they may be like. So if you do want to join us there, the link to Patreon is down below. Keep in mind the billing cycle is on the first of every month. So you will be billed twice if you sign up today. I just need to tell you, you may want to wait until the first of the month. Anyway, Love you so much, group two. Please look after your precious mind. Be patient, be gentle, and 
remember that you deserve to be loved. You have this beautiful mind and this beautiful big heart for a reason. I shall see you in another video. Thank you so much for all of your support. Bye. Hi, group three, and welcome. If you chose this beautiful shell, oh, I'm so happy with it. Honestly, you never know what you're going to find when you go beach combing. Then this is going to be your reading, group three. So we're asking spirit, what is next in love for you? I'm going to be starting with oracle cards. It's been a... <laughs> Twisty turny turn of events between the last two groups, similar yet different. So let's see what happens for you, group three. Oh, that was a horrible shuffle. I need to do that again. Oh, goodness. There we go. Let's submit that. All right, group three, please, spirit. For those who picked the beautiful shell, I think it's a trochus shell, but I probably am completely wrong. No, it's not a trochus shell. Oh, if you know, please comment down below. <laughs> Group three, what is next in love for group three, please? What is next in love for group three? Oh, my days. Awaiting results and lead. Ooh, this is, this is, wow. So I'm sh being shown the tower card, rebuild, Spirit is saying, rebuild. It's almost like this has already happened, but we're still waiting for something. Spirit's saying it's, we got it, we got it, we can't keep waiting. We're going to have to focus on something else. My Lord, what is going on for group, excuse me, what is going on for group three? What is next in love for group three, Spirit? What is next in love for group three? We are also being shown the three of swords. Okay, my days. Bottom deck energy for you is detach and manifest. Okay, this is really interesting. I'm not actually taking reversals though, so <laughs> I'm going to have to flip all of these upright. Um, but I'm going to keep that in mind. We're impatient and we're struggling to take the lead, but Spirit's saying we need to rebuild something. Otherwise, we're going to be trapped in sadness and isolation. Spirit is really encouraging you to really work with the universe here. Like I feel like some things are trying to be destroyed for your benefit, for your highest good. They're trying to change some things in your life. Like maybe you're moving soon or maybe the impulse to do something big is, is there or maybe someone is unexpectedly leaving your life in a way. Um, maybe someone something is changing unexpectedly. Spirit is saying that it's time to rebuild or we are going to be trapped in this sadness and isolation. Um, I do think that we're waiting for something, but at the same time, Spirit wants you to take the lead as well. Spirit's asking you to remove yourself from a situation that isn't serving you with a detach here. It's like your heart is there, but you know with your crown chakra that it's time to detach so that this can manifest appropriately. For those of you who resonate as being in divine unions, I see that a lot of this is completely out of your hand, and we're having to focus on manifesting other areas of our lives it's like we have to focus on our power so that our counterpart can focus on theirs um you're in that period of if you've resonated someone who's in separation with a divine counterpart you're in that period of trying to figure out what your role is so that your person is able to step into their power and take on their role as well now if that doesn't make sense there are other areas of your life that spirit is seemingly wanting you to rebuild that contribute to your love life. Um, what is next in love for you is overcoming a period of sadness and isolation, rebuilding yourself strongly this time in a way where um, we're not just going to fall for the person with the silver tongue. You know, we're not just going to fall for the person who treats us poorly, but gives us the attention that helps us feel validated. It's this energy of you're in a period of rebuilding something strong and something that potentially didn't exist in the first part of your lifetime. Like I feel like some of you are the best version of yourself or trying to be right now. Now with the seven of pentacles, we are waiting for something. And I do want to clarify that. What are we waiting for, spirit? What are we waiting for? It's like some of you are waiting for your masculine to take the lead. Um... But it's interesting energy. I'm not going to lie. What are we waiting for with the Seven of Pentacles? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for here? Oops. <laughs> Apparently, we're waiting for success. I'm being shown the Five of Cups reversed. We're overcoming a challenging emotional cycle right now. 
we want success, we want our energy to be more balanced, but we are waiting for the right decision. Some of you are waiting for a time or you're waiting for communication or you're waiting for a sign or it's this real feeling of like going with the flow and I don't know if that's a bad energy to be in at all. Four of Pentacles. It kind of feels like we're running out of time though. Like we don't have a lot of resources to work with anymore. We're running out of resources and we're having to be a bit frugal about our attempts because we can't afford to waste time or to lose what we are currently rebuilding. So I feel that for some of you, you want more, but you're in a tough predicament of not being able to lose what you already have and not feeling supported enough to do anything risky either. Is that the best way to describe it? I'm not too sure. Can I clarify this lead card, please, Spirit? Who's supposed to take the lead here? The Three of Swords. Oh, my gosh. So Spirit wants you to take the lead when it comes to your healing, when it comes to your way of thinking towards love. Um, you guys are manifesting, and they want you to focus more on yourself rather than the outcome here. It really feels like you're still overcoming some period of sadness here with the Three of Swords coming out twice. Spirit wants you to focus more on that. You're my group who is supposed to just be focusing on themselves. Um, it's not to say that you're going to be single forever or even for a very long time. It just feels like right here, right now, you are meant to be rebuilding your energy, your life. You're meant to be taking the lead towards your um, recovery, really, is what it feels like, your recovery with the Three of Swords here twice. It feels like we're supposed to be rebuilding ourselves right now. Yeah, because the path is changing for you. You, you are supposed to be in planning mode, not necessarily actively doing anything when it comes to love except for loving yourself and rebuilding yourself and recovering yourself being the best version for yourself so that we don't go back to what no longer serves us with the eight of cups i feel like we're starting new cycles but we first have to rebuild what has been destroyed um we first have to rebuild what we truly want Spirit's really encouraging you to detach from the outcome because I feel like many of you are manifesting something or someone. All right, Spirit. What is next in love for group three, please? What is next in love for group three? I do see success, but I see that it's out of your hands. You have a very passive approach because you're supposed to be focusing on yourself right now. Bottom deck energy, it's almost like if you were to do more, you would hurt more. So spirits like don't do more. You don't need to do more. We'll do that. You just do you. Bottom deck energy is unikite. So this is the number nine, Pluto. I think that is, yeah, the root chakra and this very interesting yoga pose. Excuse me. Ah, oh, that's a good sign. I did it in threes. One group, I only did it twice, and I, that's so uncharacteristic of me. I got very worried for them. So Unikite, the number nine in Pluto, um, it kind of feels like you're transforming yourself. You're actually meant to be a little bit of a hermit right now. You're meant to complete this tough cycle um, because it, it, it is all just about you right now. It is all about you, a bit of introspection, a bit of positive energy, like anything that you can muster should be directed at yourself. You shouldn't be wasting your love on people who you can't rely on, who you don't know are as invested in this journey as you. I get this intuitive knowing that um, dating almost wouldn't serve your journey right now because you don't have a lot of resources to waste. And the process of dating, especially online, can be very wasteful. So you are actually meant to just spend time with yourself, transforming yourself, going back to basics, getting into a health routine for some of you, if that helps. I'm not encouraging you to if you don't think you need to. Um, but it's more so about going back to basics with the root chakra here, grounding yourself and rebuilding yourself from the ground up. Um, we had Garnet come out for you, which is the number 13 Sagittarius and your third eye. I also think that that pose, that yoga pose, would be very 
um, helpful mostly because it's you're grounding your energy like your root chakra is, is supposed to be flat but you're also reaching up you're stretching you're extending yourself and you're leaving yourself open in a way like I just feel like that physically would be very therapeutic as close as you can get to the ground I know that a lot of people can't do that pose <laughs> but as close as you can get to the ground to sort of ground yourself and then reach up like an antenna receiving signals and wisdom now with the number 13 your luck is changing okay Sagittarius is here to say that luck is on your side your circumstances are changing and where you feel out of control the universe has your back just focus on you with black tourmaline here you are protected with the number 30 I do see the end of a tough cycle approaching but Pluto's energy here is confirming that you are meant to be invested in your transformation at this time trusting your intuitive mind and grounding yourself in ways that you can in terms of rebuilding yourself from the ground up let's get forward we're going to get some um tarot i've just completely forgot <laughs> i was in a different different world i was in the channeling world all right so for group three please spirit what is next in love for group three what is next in love for group three please oh wow all of these Okay, I'll take them. Wowzers. Oh my gosh. Bottom deck energy is the chariot. So you need to know that movement is coming. In fact, I feel that the more you spend really focusing on you and your feelings and rebuilding your world, the quicker this will come to you. Like it feels like it's coming to you because you're in a passive energy. So I feel like you're attracting this to you. And the chariot is about mustering your fears versus your feelings. So when you're focusing on yourself and really focusing on what feels good for you and where you're meant to be, um, it allows the universe to kind of move things towards you. When you're in control of yourself, it gives room for the universe to control the heavy lifting, if that makes sense. Now, I do feel with the world here that we are reaching the end of a difficult cycle. There is going to be a culminating event, some sort of culmination, um, an opportunity to look back at how far we've come and to celebrate where we're at. I do feel like this process attracts someone into your life with the King of Pentacles. They could be an earth sign. This is someone who is stable, who is committed, who is available. Um, I want to say that this is someone who appreciates your success. They're going to recognize your worth. This is someone who is going to understand what you've been through. They're going to be curious about your success and your rise to the top. And they're going to have a very keen eye on you. There's something about this situation with them that does require that patience we were talking about. So remember how with the lead here, you were supposed to focus on your healing and your recovery. Um, your process is supposed to be on self because I do think that when this person comes in, your direction changes. Some of you may move. Um, some of you, this person comes in and all of a sudden your circumstances change quite quickly with the two of wands reversed. I feel like you're meant to be in a loose state of planning, just really just aspiration building for yourself, allowing no stone to be unturned when it comes to dreaming big because this person comes in and they seem to really instigate some sort of change. With the four of wands here, your energy changes with them. The two of wands and the four of wands reversed, you could be moving home quite soon. It kind of feels like what is next in love for you is that whatever you imagine for your future, it is going to change. So you kind of need to be in this malleable energy where you're just sort of recovering and, and, and aspiring and, and building your aspirations and just sort of staying open, um, allowing your heart to heal and your strong foundations to be rebuilt. rebuilt. It feels with the Queen of Cups here, like you are going to be adored you are going to be devoted to this person to this connection for some of you if you don't know this person you may know them already um, but I feel that you are going to have very strong feelings for them and you are going to feel um, safe enough to love them because the focus is still on yourself the Queen of Cups is always looking at this mirror thing um, on this card it's, it's a mirror for me. In other decks, it's like a gauntlet or some sort of cup that she's fixated on. And it kind of is this energy of that love must come from within. Like you have to, you have to look at or hold that love from within and 
keep that as your base, if that makes sense. I'm really butchering this. I, <laughs> I just kind of went straight into filming today. But what I'm feeling here is that because you've spent time recovering and focusing on yourself and making sure that you are recovered, when this person comes in, you're going to recognize them, you're going to want something with them, and you're going to feel safe enough to want something with them. Because you know that no matter what happens, even though they don't give you any reason to distrust them, you're always going to have that love from within. I do think this person is trustworthy. If they came out reversed, I would be questioning, but they seem to be someone who is ready for commitment, who is open, who is available, who is reliable, who is loyal. Um, I'm hearing that they're honest as well, and they're very intrigued by your success, something that you've been working on. They're, they're wanting to know more about that like you guys bond over like an unexpected like hobby or like some sort of work thing or some sort of school thing like it's interesting they they very they admire you to say the least like that's how they see you is is at the end of this cycle when you've got something to be proud of and you're celebrating this person is comes into your energy and wants to know about this like what are you celebrating oh my god that's amazing who are you <laughs> That's crazy. And they change your future very quickly. So I'm almost getting that you may move in together very quickly or something like that. But it very quickly becomes hard to stay away from each other is what I want to tell you. With the High Priestess ending over here, your passive energy is being rewarded, Group 3. Especially if you you identify yourself as a divine feminine, you aren't meant to be out here making the impossible happen. You aren't meant to be obsessing over someone's lack of actions. You are meant to be focusing on yourself, to be trusting the universe, to be trusting your divine counterpart, to be reinstigating, reinstilling. Is that the best word? Just focusing on, on you and your role of loving yourself, mothering yourself, nurturing yourself. And it feels like this leaves room for your divine counterpart, who seems to be quite masculine, um, to be able to take the initiative necessary towards you. Let's get some more hints as to what is next in love for you, group three. What is next in love for group three, please? What is next in love for group three? Oops, I didn't get a lot. Okay. I might see if I can grab some more after this. Um, the first thing that came out for you was no, which is interesting. I think it's about focusing on your boundaries too and recognizing what is your responsibility and what isn't. Um, I usually like to do initials first though. So let me just separate some of those. In terms of initials, we have the letter E. We also have the letter W. I'm also being shown Q. We also have a C over here. Why did I do it like that? Did you notice I went like this? <laughs> we have a letter O next. We have a letter X. We also have a B. Oh, I heard baby. Okay. Um, so we know that this no came out about kind of pulling back and focusing more on you. It may be that other areas of your life are also testing your boundaries and your limitations as well. So kind of pulling back and giving yourself room to breathe. We have you already know. So some of you guys already know kind of what's coming or you already know who you're supposed to spend your future with. It's just about getting through the now, rebuilding yourself and taking that so those steps towards your recovery, but really trusting your intuition is, is something that's coming through and being in a passive energy of, of faith as well. We have the eighth house. So you are transforming group three. I'm not too sure what's going on here, but you're in a period of transformation. You guys are being, being rebirthed, rebuilt, um, taking those steps towards your rebirth as well and towards the endings that are required in order for this rebirth. Some cycles or some patterns may need to be ended or um, may need to pass so that you can rebuild it appropriately. We have Aquarius as your sign as well. So I'm going to get more because we didn't get too much for you. Um, what else can you tell group three about that? What is next in love for them, please, Spirit? That's a bit better. Yay. I feel much better now. We've got more. All right. As I like to do, let's see what else we got when it comes to initials. We also have the letter F. 
fire as well came out and that's what I heard when I touched F. We also have the letter G and we've got another E, so two E's coming out. This person could have double letters, first, middle, last name, or you could. We have the words awakening. So I do think that this is a period of transformation that leads you to feeling more in line. Um, and I mean in line, but I guess alignment is, is a better way of saying it. But it feels like you're more aligned to who you're meant to be. You're more in line with your blueprint for your life's journey in this lifetime, if that makes sense. You feel better. You feel like, oh, I can breathe or I'm more like me than I've ever been. There's this energy of being the best version of yourself right now. And I think that this in itself is worth celebrating and just spending time acknowledging as well, like what you are processing. Even if some of this pain is from years ago, you've still experienced it in this lifetime. And when you think about the fact that time isn't real or, you know, time is nonlinear, um, that pain could have happened yesterday. It's being triggered right here, right now for a reason. You are meant to rebuild exactly right now for a reason. Now, when it comes to other hearts, other hearts, excuse me, <laughs> when it comes to other houses was what I was supposed to say. We have the 12th house coming out for you, which says endings, secrets, and imagination. That's Pisces energy. You are ending something, absolutely, in order to rebuild. You are meant to have Neptune's energy sort of building your aspirations and helping you feel confident. You may not know everything in terms of what lies around the corner, but you are meant to feel confident in who you are and you are meant to have these big aspirations for yourself. We have the sacral chakra coming out for you as well. That form of, I feel like, okay, when the sacral chakra comes out, I feel called to remind us all that for me, this is my personal interpretation. I see the sacral chakra as like the womb of our life. We need it to be unblocked. We need it to be open. We need it to be working and operating. Otherwise, nothing in our life can grow. It is the source of our passion, our inspiration, our creativity, creation full stop. Our sacral chakra, we have to feel comfortable and ready to express ourselves and able to express ourselves in that way. Even if it leads to um, feelings of passion and sexuality, it is a form of creating in our life what we are meant to have. And I really feel because you had the root chakra, like you're slowly growing, you're slowly building yourself up again from the ground up. When you hit this period of inspiration, that's when I kind of see things changing for you. When you embrace your creative nature and this ability to express yourself, your passions again, where your aspirations lie again, that's when I kind of see this King of Pentacles coming in again. Now, we have the throat chakra coming out for you as well. So clear communication, clear thinking is what I want to tell you. Don't let that logical mind run you into the gutter. Really give yourself space and time to understand your th thought process and to be feeling confident enough to express yourself as well. We have heart chakra coming out for you as well. So we've got the second, fourth, and fifth chakras. I do feel with your heart chakra that it's giving yourself time to recover. Well, for whatever reason, we're in a period of healing and introspection and we're meant to be here. We're meant to be rebuilding ourselves. We're meant to be really focusing on setting firm foundations for ourselves and aspiring for more. Now, in terms of signs, we also have Aquarius joining, joined by Taurus now. We have Cancer coming out as well. We have Capricorn, so a lot of Earth energy. And we have the fourth house, so Cancer again. The fourth house meaning home, parents, and nurturing. Nurturing ourselves, mothering ourselves, fathering ourselves, creating stability for ourselves, and recovering ourselves as well. So group three, that's what I have for you in terms of what is next in love for you. I am going to take this into the extended now. In our extended reading, we will be looking at... Um, time frames as to when you can expect your king of pentacles to come in um i do time frames by looking at your events in your life not by getting like months or days or weeks i prefer to look at where you're going to be at in life when this person comes in and that can help you figure out when they're coming in i'll also be looking at channeled messages from this person and we are going to get personality traits as well the extended is on patreon if you skipped the intro patreon's billing cycle is on the first of every month so if you're not a patron yet and you sign up today or when this video is posted, you will be billed twice. So I recommend you wait until the first of the month so that you're only billed once. Um, and the first of the month in terms of US time as well. If you're Australian, 
the first of us for us is actually the last day of the month for them. So you want to wait until the second. Anyway, do email me or reach out if you're concerned about that. Um, otherwise, listen, if you're not joining us over there, sending you so much love and light on your journey. Thank you for all of your support and I shall see you in another video. Bye.